Israel now at the Knesset floor during a special session called by the Israeli opposition. Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu and the opposition leader M.K. Yair Lapid traded barbs over the war in Gaza, tensions with Lebanon and Israel's national security. All of this is taking place as the people of Israel continue to call for the resignation of the Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu as well as his government. Now Netanyahu berated ministers who said and were caught drilling a hole in the state's boat during wartime. Lapid responded to Netanyahu saying that nothing would remain of his legacy other than the failure of October 7th when Hamas rampaged inside Israel and took dozens of citizens hostage. The Israeli opposition leader accused Netanyahu of bearing the utmost responsibility of what he describes as the massacre of Israeli citizens and the military failure. Lapid repeated calls for the Israeli Prime Minister to resign. He said that the Israeli P Prime Minister is a threat to the national security and is harming country's foreign relations. Lapid referred to the findings by the Commission of Inquiry formed under then Premier Naftali Bennett in 2022 about corruption and purchase of submarines and several other naval vessels by the Netanyahu government, former military general and national security advisers. The committee sent cautionary letters to five individuals, including the Prime Minister and former Mossad chief Yossi Cohen. In the heated Knesset Finance Committee meeting, opposition ministers blasted Netanyahu's decision to use budget excesses from 2023 rather than funding the war needs. National Unity MK Orit Farkash argued that while Netanyahu plans to mobilize IDF troops to fight Iran-backed Hezbollah militants on the border with Lebanon, Israel is not economically prepared for the war in the north. He reminded that the northern front is not even included in the budget and much of the funds were debated for the education reform program. This means that VAT hike by 1% and taxation on the savings for Israeli citizens. Meanwhile, more troubles mounted for the Israeli Prime Minister and his governing coalition after the Israeli Supreme Court's landmark ruling that the military must begin drafting ultra-Orthodox men for compulsory service. The court put an end to the decades-old system that granted ultra-Orthodox males broad exemptions from the military service but made it mandatory for the secular Jewish majority to enlist. The arrangement for a significantly long time was slammed as discriminatory by the critics who pushed for Israel's ultra-Orthodox communities to share the burden of protecting the country and fight on the front lines. The court struck down the law that codified exemptions in 2017 and this implies that the military service applies to the ultra-Orthodox like any other Israeli citizen. The military service for ultra-Orthodox Jews became a heated topic in Israel with the military embroiled in a war in Gaza and an escalating conflict on its border with Lebanon. The ruling wasn't welcomed by the ultra-Orthodox Jews. Now stakes are high for Israel's Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu as his government includes two Haredi parties whose departure could trigger new elections, which opinion polls indicate he would lose. For all the latest news, download the Vion app and subscribe to our YouTube channel.